सो दिस इज द फोर्थ पार्ट ऑफ कैबिन नॉइस कैंसिलेशन और मोस्ट प्रोबेबली द लास्ट पार्ट वट वी आर पेंडिंग विद इज विंड नॉइस रिडक्शन वी हैव डन द इंजन नॉइस रिडक्शन वी हैव डन द टायर नॉइस रिडक्शन आई वॉज एक्चुअली वेटिंग फॉर दिस पार्ट बिकॉज आई हैव टू डू टू टू थ्री वर्क बिफोर दैट आई कैन शूट दिस वीडियो सो वन वॉज द गेयर ऑयल चेंज बिकॉज अर्लियर विच ट्रांसमिशन फ्लूड आई वॉज यूजिंग I didn't feel it was up to the mark, so uh, we shifted to Motul seventy five ninety semi synthetic. You can find the videos on channel, or I'll drop all the links in the description so you can find that easily. Very first step to reduce noise, and these are more kind of uh, suggestions because these things also contribute towards the cabin noise. First is using a good engine oil. Uh, if you are using the proper grade uh, as per this vehicle which is 5w40 approved uh, to the level of vw50501 that is what we need for this oil it will actually uh, make you feel that the engine is running much more silent and smoother secondly the gear oil a good gear oil will lubricate the gears properly but as well as it will help to dampen the gear whining sound if you are not using the proper grade of oil you can actually hear those gear rumbling inside your cabin as well in most probably in fourth or fifth gear above 100 110 km per hour so these two things now we are uh, moving towards the thing we need to do for the wind noise so we have moved out of the vehicle as you can see the vehicle has this rubber seal sub rubber o ring seal weather shields whatever you want to call it Uh, they are basically made up of rubber so as with time due to the compression from the gate they lose their shape they lose their flexibility so what you have to do is firstly clean them properly with the help of soapy water and uh, a damp cloth some people recommend using alcohol but i don't feel comfortable in using alcohol because it can actually uh, increase the speed of degradation of rubber as it makes it very dry after cleaning these rubber seals you have to apply a silicon lubricant so that you can uh, rejuvenate the rubber so they maintain their elasticity flexibility to seal against the door properly so it is not the only one uh, one is here another one is on the doors here on the top as well one more thing you have to keep in mind sometimes these outer seals these outer seals start to create a gap and the air get traps inside and you hear wind noise so check it evenly it should have no gaps with the window rolled up so the next thing you have to look for so that your gate presses against that rubber seal properly is your door lock as you can see uh, there are uh, 2 m 8 bit screws Uh, which is used to tighten the door lock on the door as you can see i have a little bit of gap uh, in the lock and the door body so mine is adjusted all the way too far to uh, grab the latch properly so it's already tight from here so we can't adjust it anymore so if you are stuck in a situation where you can't adjust your door lock there is one more thing we can do. so this is the door latch as it also have some m bits but it doesn't have any kind of uh, adjustment but we still need to make sure that door is catching the door lock very tightly and pressing against these rubber seals properly so what we can do is we can hammer this side so that it moves a little bit inside and we have to do uh, it on all four doors as you can see from the witness marks from the earlier position the door latch has moved one or two mm and that is all we need to make sure the gate seals against the rubber seal properly so just to show you i have removed one of the screws with the help of a m8 as you can see these are countersunk and the screws used are also countersunk so no matter uh, if you try to loosen them up and push them backwards and then try to uh, tighten them up these countersunk screws will keep the position of the 
latch on the same place where they were so you cannot have the adjustment with the help of tightening and loosening the screws so this door latch technique will also work uh, on this on that situations where uh, you are moving on an uneven surface and you hear uh, doors kind of moving because uh, as you are moving on an uneven surface your chassis of the vehicle gets flexed a little so loose doors are much more noticeable on uneven surfaces as compared to flats doors are different but the boot is totally different i have already uh, loosened these m8 screws as you can see the boot latch has a little bit of adjustment and the bolts are not even countersunk so you can push the latch all the way down and then try to uh, tighten the m8 bolts And yes, that's a magnet. I always keep one magnet handy. So this is the position I find to be <laughs> secure enough to keep the magnet. You must be thinking in a video where we are trying to reduce the cabin noise inside a car. Why are we opening the headlight? Or why are we are trying to remove the headlight? So bear with me. Wait a minute. You will get to know. because uh, there is a section in the center line where Volkswagen provides you uh, with a dampening material fact inside a poly bag and dampening material is nothing more than just foam and dampening material deteriorates after some time so you need to either replace it or do what I have done on the other side I take a foam decent size of foam and uh, packed it inside a ziplock bag and that inserted it inside the place where it's supposed to be so this is a direct chassis section so it covers this area from where the engine sound can actually travel directly to the cowl top so this is also one of the sound insulations uh, our cars have so this part is I don't think it will be available just in case if you want part number I can provide you part number not possible I was trying to clean the plastic bag and the part number came off so sorry so this is the time of the final test as we did in the very first video I guess it was somewhere close to 69 decibels earlier so we are going to do the same test we are going to reset it and take the average of 15 everything is as same as before stereo is off air conditioning is off car is at 90 degrees at the operating temperature the only thing variation is that car is at fast idle i will try to okay now it's perfect so we have to reset and stop the talking so the average came out to be 59.2 so almost uh, 10 decibels of decrement I guess as far as I remember so that is the total result of doing four things in total uh, two or three more things to be considered while uh, trying to reduce the cabin noise conditions of your engine mount because firstly condition of your engine uh, if it's running properly it's running more efficiently most silent possible manner because uh, if the source of the vibration is increasing the vibration you can't do anything to stop it on the path so very first thing uh, making sure that engine is running ideally as it should 
secondly the condition of engine mounts because if a little bit of vibrations are created by the engine then engine mounts are the thing which is ideally there to reduce the intensity of the vibration getting transferred to the cabin after these two things then you can proceed with uh, the thermoacoustic blanket stuff we did on the fender liner on the cowl top front and these wind noise reduction techniques